Paco. Welcome to the show, Policy for the People. I'm your host, Minara Mordecai. Today on the show, we are discussing a topic that's near and dear to my heart, computer science education in Hawaii. I'm joined by a very special guest, Dr. Truck Nguyen, who is a faculty specialist at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the College of Education. She's an expert on learning technologies, and Dr. Nguyen also writes about and assists schools with creating internet safety policies and teaching students about um, safe online practices. Last year, I had the privilege of working with Truck on a statewide landscape report to look at the state of computer science education in Hawaii. But let's begin with the basics. Let's dive in, and um, Truck, if you could tell us, what is computer science? And, how is it different from digital literacy? Oh, that's a really great question, Manara. Um, thank you for having me today. Um, computer science is the study of computers and the principles of how computers function. So that includes algorithmic processes, um, hardware and software, the application of computers in different systems and, and their impacts on society. Digital literacy, on the other hand, is about your, no- your knowledge about how to use digital tools effectively, efficiently, and responsibly. So um, I'll use roads as an example. You know, we all are on roads regularly. We drive on them, we bike on them, we walk um, across the street. We know what the signal lights mean, when to go, when to stay, how to stay in lanes as we're moving along. Um, That's our knowledge and our responsibility. So road literacy is like digital literacy. But do we all know how to build a road? Do we know the differences between asphalt and concrete? How to design a bridge that thousands of people walk over, bike over, drive over? Um, We don't know those. We don't know the waterways. We don't know how to make lights turn green, yellow, and red. Um, Those is, that's the computer science aspect of it. So there's a difference between knowing how it functions and how to make it function and how to use it. So that's the difference between computer science and digital literacy. So it's it's a pretty um, advanced skill to be able to tr- to um, have computer science literacy. So you and I worked on the landscape report last year to look at computer science education. What we found is that computer science education has become critical to developing strong tech labor, not on, only in Hawaii, but around the country. So can you tell us more about the connection between computer science education and its impact on the workforce? Why is it important? Does it lead to better jobs or wages? Yeah, you know, th- those are really great questions. Also, um, understanding computers and how things are interconnected that's important in this day and age of technology and the internet of things. Uh, yeah. There's communication technology, entertainment, music, fashion, food, and so much more. Um, you know, computer science, we, we look at the production, the analysis, the timing, connecting people. Um, even President Obama once said that in this new economy, um, you know, computer science isn't optional. It's a basic skill. And Mm -hmm. I think he said that because he recognized the interconnectedness um, in the workforce, regardless of what we choose as our careers, as our professions. Um, Computer science is a factor because it gives you a leg up on how things can be done more efficiently and effectively, Um, you know, how things function and how things connect. So you talked about the shift in the labor tech force, and I think that's really an important thing to consider, um, the diverse workforce in the tech labor workforce is is critical. Um, Computer science used to be dominated by men and the Mm -hmm. growing presence of women, the growing presence of our LGBTQ plus colleagues, people with disabilities, um, even some of the underrepresented groups like our Black, Hispanic, Native, Indigenous colleagues here in Hawaii, our Native Hawaiian colleagues. um, All of these voices and perspectives are important in the conversations of progress. And it's actually shifted away from how can we do it faster to why do we do it? And what benefits can computer science give to society as a whole? I think that's so exciting. And talking about ethics and the benefits to society um, that computer science offers, I, I think it's made richer 
with these diverse voices and perspectives. Um, you asked about the the how much we make. <laughs> That's always an important question. You know, in Hawaii, they say that um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics they they state that the average salary um, here in Hawaii for people is about fifty three thousand dollars on on average. Uh, whereas in computer related occupations, it actually goes up to eighty five thousand um, for your annual salary. So in general, you know, computer science knowledge can be leveraged into better paying jobs. Um, I think at the national level, there's going to be about 10.5 million jobs in STEM. And STEM means science, technology, engineering, and math. Mm -hmm. And they're predicting that seven out of 10 of those jobs will be computer-related jobs. So overall, wow. um, it just is, if you have computer science knowledge and you can leverage that into any of your chosen fields, I think it does lead to better jobs, wages, and better, a uh, better economy overall. Thank you for that. So um, can you give an example of how computer science can be helpful in, um, sci in physics, for example, or in uh, sciences that, that are not directly computer related, but still we see an impact of computer science in other industry? Right. You know, um, you're talking about physics, biology, other sciences, and yeah. um, all of these different fields actually use a lot of data and data science is an outcropping of the computer science field. And there's so much data that is coming at us from different places. Um, even as we sit here, joined online, all of this had to have been developed, managed, um, actually maintained in some manner. And all of that really starts with computer science and understanding how those things come together and and can connect. Um, I would say in, in physics, um, you have a lot of computations that are needed mm -hmm. um, in physics principles. And so that comes with our computers. And if you have something that's inputted and you have something that's processed and outputted, that's a computer. So your basic calculator mm -hmm. is a computer. And um, gosh, our phones, um, all the developments that happen there. So I think data is the part that computer science comes into play with a lot of different professions. I mean, even someone who's managing a, a bakery actually can use some computer science skills to help manage um, their bakery and the functioning of that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, definitely using a lot of data for the show and as well as other things in our lives. So it isn't computer science or people with skill who are, are skilled in computer science are in demand now and will be even more so in the future. And I know you had um, pretty interesting conversations with tech industry leaders. We, and you learned about the types of qualities and skills that they're looking for when hiring in the tech sectors. What were some of those things that they mentioned, um, the types of qualities that they look for when hiring? <laughs> wow. Our industry partners, uh, we talked to about a dozen industry and nonprofit technology professionals. Um, if I could crystallize it into one thing, I think what they're looking for are people who have strong interpersonal teamwork skills who can transfer the knowledge that they have into different situations. Um, not necessarily people with specific computer science knowledge, but generalized computer science knowledge mm -hmm. or the, that thought process, the logical reasoning understanding of how things are connected. That's what they're looking for. Um, they said that they weren't looking for specialized knowledge because they can build that special, specialized knowledge for their companies when a person joins. Um, but it's harder to develop interpersonal skills and the mindset of logic, reasoning, and interconnectedness. So that's what they're looking for. The other thing that they said that was fascinating for me is the recognition that they want younger children to be exposed to computer science concepts and ideas earlier um, because they want children to know that what's possible for them. And exposure at an early age instills a really high level of curiosity to reason out how things are connected and, and what leads to the next thing and what might come back around again. 
So they really emphasize exposure to computer science at an early age, um, just as a, as a curiosity. And then when they're hiring someone who has interpersonal transferable skills. Interesting. Um, I imagine it also builds a sense of confidence to start learning about computers early on. Um, so th there was also a conversation about so we have a high demand for the workforce. Uh, we know what we're looking for, but it's still challenging. Um, it, they, they face some challenges in hiring people to fill these jobs. Um, what would some of the challenges that they mentioned um, have been in, in fulfilling tech sector jobs? That was a robust conversation and everyone started jumping in on <laughs> I asked about that. Uh, you know, the main challenge that our industry partners shared with us was that students who are computer science oriented, so they may have taken AP computer science, they may have been in clubs, they may have done things on their own. Um, a lot of those students are actually leaving Hawaii. And when we think about leaving, um, they call that brain drain. It's, it's a, a terminology that they use and, and other people use. When they leave, it, it's because they're seeking better jobs elsewhere or they're seeking higher pay. And so we can't seem to retain them here in Hawaii. There's a misperception about the lack of jobs in computer science when actually there are quite a number of jobs here. Um, so our industry partners were sharing with us how they'll bring students in as interns into their, their companies. They'll pour so much energy into training them and welcoming them into their projects and getting them enculturated into their particular uh, settings. And then they graduate and they leave. <laughs> they, they leave for elsewhere. And we're all happy for our students. We always are when they find opportunities, when they're accepted into colleges and schools on the mainland. Um, we're very happy for them. But at the same time, there's a level of sadness because we don't know if they're coming back. And trying to pull them back has been a challenge for the tech industry. Um, it's also been a challenge for other industries as well um, because we have such a high dependence on tourism here in Hawaii and the tech sector jobs are seen as elsewhere. Um, maybe this pandemic has changed that perception. Um, we don't know yet, but some companies are changing some of their policies. So perhaps some of that has it has been dealt with, maybe. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I was wondering if you can briefly, I mean, no pressure, but if you were to solve this problem of brain drain, you have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Really quickly, I, I think that if our programs here, uh, whether in industry or in higher education, if we built into our programs an opportunity for kids to get away, our students mm -hmm. to get away, our interns to get away, learn, and then bring them back, mm -hmm. but build that into the program so that you bring them back at the end of the program, then they're here mm -hmm. again, and then are then reconnected. I yeah. think that could be something that provides an opportunity to deal with brain drain. Thank you. I like that idea. Um, on that note, we are off on a very brief break and we will be back shortly. We're talking about computer science education in Hawaii with Dr. Chuck Nguyen. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on ThinkTech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on ThinkTech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then, aloha. Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we're talking about computer science education in Hawaii with Dr. Chuck Nguyen, um, who is a principal researcher for computer science education landscape report last year. 
So um, can you tell us a little bit about what you found in terms of the interest of the students, public school students, and I know your, uh, the report was focused on public schools, um, the interest that K through 12 public school students showed in learning about computer science and whether you saw some discrepancies there. You know, there, there were some discrepancies. And so I do need to give a shout out to Manara also, who was part <laughs> of an important writing team for the landscape report. Uh, you know, in terms of K-12 students showing interest, I think we didn't get to talk to the students directly, but if you were to look at what types of courses they're signing up for and what courses they're completing um, in the high school level, you'll notice that there are students who are interested, but there might be a competing course um, that prevents them from taking computer science. And so that was often happening um, at the different schools as you were just looking at the scheduling and the course structure. At the middle school levels, it was a little hard to tell because at the middle schools, most of the computer science courses, when we looked at them, were required courses, like all students mm -hmm. took the course. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't tell if there was choice or not choice. But at the mm -hmm. high school levels, we started to see choices about um, differences in interest in computer science versus something like web design, which mm -hmm. In some way, in some places, we're listed as computer science, but we're starting to get better definitions right now around what is and is not computer science. But what can we do to increase their interest? I think we need to change the messaging around what computer science can lead towards as a career, as, a, as community impact, because a lot of students now are interested in community impact and want to give back um, to their neighborhoods, to their societies. I think also industry can play a role in that, in making more clear or more evident um, what roles in their particular companies um, have a computer science um, aspect to it. So I think maybe mm -hmm. those are things we could possibly do. Okay. Um, I know, so one of the things that prompted this report, the landscape report was, um, Governor Ige and the educational leaders in our state, they did recognize that there needed to, something needed to be done to increase participation in computer science. That it has become a critical subject area for um, education. So three years ago, there was a law that was passed in Hawaii, Act 51. Um, can you tell us more about Act 51 and what it intended to do? 2000, it was passed in 2018. So we are now three years forward looking back at what, what's been accomplished. Right. Act 51, um, right, it was passed in 2018. Mm -hmm. and it was stated as, and, and this is political language, but it was stated as <laughs> computer science is a matter of statewide concern. And so they, they started with that. And what they did was, you know, our lawmakers, as you said, they saw computer science as having a potential to shift and drive growth in, in innovation in our economy here um, to broaden the concepts of tourism, to make other industries stronger. And Act 51 had two different mandates that mm -hmm. made it the final version because there was an early version and a final version. In the early, in the final version, uh, the first mandate was to develop a statewide K-12, kindergarten through grade 12 computer science curriculum for our public school mm -hmm. system. So that was the first mandate. The second mandate was to ensure that all public high schools offered at least one computer science course. Mm -hmm. And in Act 51, they allocated $500,000 to help to develop the um, curriculum plan. So that was part of Act 51. Now, the part that did not make it into the final version was a, um, a mandate to make it a graduation requirement. Mm -hmm. And that graduation requirement, I think, in my humble opinion, we weren't ready for that yet because one, there weren't enough courses. So if there's no course and a student can't take it, how can you make it a graduation requirement? Um, mm -hmm. Two, we, we need to work a lot with our teachers still um, in order to have something like that be a graduation requirement. So mm -hmm. where are we now? We, we have all our high schools have computer science in them different levels of computer science, but they're all present in the schools at least. Uh, so I think that's a good thing. And a lot of mm -hmm. teachers have undergone professional development at this point to learn more about computer science and what it means to have a class that has mm -hmm. computer 
in it. So you said there are different levels. How do you um, classify that? If you can give us some examples of different types of computer science courses from like the most advanced to the, the, the foundational one. Great. You know, there's a, uh, in the course structure of the public school education system, the most high level of computer science you can take is called advanced placement computer mm-hmm. science. And those courses lead towards college credit if they're accepted into the different colleges and universities a student um, submits their score to. So there's AP Computer Science Principles, which is a fairly new course. It's for generalists. So those who Mm -hmm. might not go into computer science as a field or a major, but want to learn more about what computer science is and how it's connected to our world and our, our everyday lives. Um, Then there's computer science A, they call it. Uh, That one is for those who are interested in becoming computer science majors and going into the discipline of computer science in their uh, future careers. And that one is a little more intense. It goes more into programming and algorithms and networking and um, a little more uh, closely into databases as well. Then you have other types of computer science courses that might be part of a career technical education pathway. So you have some business technology, some engineering technology courses that are considered computer science also. Um, So it it really runs the gamut. So I think Mm -hmm. this year with a new bill that's coming up, they're gonna start to clarify the definitions of what is computer science and how that's defined and described. Okay, so can you tell us a little bit more? And I know it's exciting news that Governor Eager just announced that you'll be signing this bill, um, SB 242. Um, Tell us more about this. It's, you know, fresh off the presses. It is. Oh my gosh, Minara. The first (laughs) thing it does for me is, um, which is something that I really wanted to do, was it defines computer science. That Mm -hmm. is, for me, really, really important. Um, It actually adds the language of what computer science is um, in, in, the, in the bill. And uh, last time when we did the computer science landscape report, there was still confusion over what is and is not. So this bill actually defines um, what computer science is and what the course structure should be in order to earn computer science credit. So I think mm-hmm. that was an important element. The other thing that the act does, um, or not this act, the previous act looked only at high school in terms of mandatory computer science. This new bill is introducing a staggered requirement of computer science in elementary schools, in middle schools, and and how that's connected to the high schools. So that staggered requirement of Mm -hmm. middle schools and elementary schools and the connection, what we call the vertical integration of computer science, Mm -hmm. I think that has so much promise. And it's going to be exciting to see what the school systems do to actuate or implement um, the particular bill. Um, So, you know, since 2018, I know the Department of Education has worked pretty hard in um, increasing number of courses, increasing exposure. Um, Where do you see, do you feel like, or did you find when looking back, there's still some equity gaps in participation. You know, we definitely had an increase in number of students who are participating in computer science, but is everyone um, going at the same pace? What did you find in terms of that? Well, definitely everyone is not going at the same pace. Um, Mm -hmm. What we found was there are definitely gaps in elective participation. So of course, Mm -hmm. when the courses are, are set for you and you must take it, that's one thing. And so that's, There's no gaps there because everyone's in it. But when you start looking at the advanced courses and you look at the elective Mm -hmm. options, um, there there is a decrease. Every single course type and structure had a decrease in the number of girls. There are always more boys than there were girls. Um, There's also a a reduction in the number of students in the free reduced lunch programs who are taking computer science by choice, Uh, a reduction in students who are uh, designated as ELL, or English language learners. And also we took a look also at whether our Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander students were enrolled and we found a very low number. Um, It really matters the school and the type of computer science that they're offering. 
um, because there is a range and there is a difference from high school to high school um, of what is offered. And so I think overall, we need to do a better job of scheduling the opportunities so more students can take it if they want to, and a better job of offering the varied courses. And some of the, if they can't take it at their school, is there another way that students who are interested can take it via another means if it's mm-hmm. not offered at their school? Because maybe there's only one student who's interested in a, in a higher mm-hmm. level course. And right now there's, there is e-school, there's an online school um, potential and possibility. Um, it's just the students need to have access and that opportunity to, to take those. Thank you. So, you know, you mentioned that I, I, I really like the reference you made to making a cultural connection and make, making sure the students know the impact that their learning would have. Um, can you think of other examples of policies you've seen coming out of other states to help um, alleviate some of the equity gaps to make sure that underrepresented students are becoming more interested in computer science? Mm-hmm. You know, I think the most exciting thing I've learned about has come out of um, that has come out of other states has to do with connecting it to society. And so when you have uh, something that's more project based learning oriented, and you can pull the ideas of how computer science can make something better. So they identify a problem or, uh, uh, or they, they're trying to develop a solution for something that really gets the kids thinking about how can I bring myself and my knowledge and even my culture and my background into these solutions. And so bringing that in, I think that has been a fascinating aspect of some of the other programs in other states is not just talking about the content of computer knowledge, um, computer science knowledge, but also the what do you bring to the table and can marry that with computer science knowledge. Here we have the Hall framework in our public school system. I think that can be a powerful, powerful entity in computer science education here. Um, I think, you know, we need to stop thinking about if we build the course, the students will come. I mean, we need to think about how the the course can be built to engage the students and to tap into um, some of the skill sets that they already have, some of the the knowledge that they already have in coming to the table. So I think that for me has been the most exciting thing from other states that I've seen. Thank you. It's very inspiring and a great way to end our conversation. Again, we're talking with Dr. Chuck Nguyen, um, who is one of the co-authors of um, the landscape computer science education landscape report. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, Dr. Nguyen. It was a pleasure as always to talk to you. And I can't wait to see what's next. Mahalo. Thank you, Sarah.